All right, so in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate how to create a modal animation using React, Frame or Motion, and the Animate Presence component. We can see an example of a modal in action on this site called meowbox.com. Notice that the modal generally consists of a semi-transparent overlay, which prevents you from accessing or reading the page as normal, as well as the modal content itself, which is often represented as a card. So this modal demands that you either respond to its call to action or you simply dismiss it. And in this particular example, I can either click on that background overlay or directly on the X to dismiss it. And that takes me back to the page as normal, where I can once again scroll up and down the page and continue along my journey. So the basic idea of a modal is that it puts the user into a different mode. In other words, you can think of the normal usage of the site as sort of a default mode. But then, as soon as the modal pops up, we get locked out of the default mode, so to speak, until we respond to the modal. So in our example here, we're going to open our modal when we click on the button. And when we do so, right, we've got our semi-transparent background, which is blocking access to the page. And we've got our little exclusive offer here. And then we can close out of this mode by either clicking on the close button or clicking on the background overlay. So let me click on the background. And notice that there's a little exit animation. It's quick, but there's a little opacity fade out and a slight scale down. And one more thing I wanna point out before we dive into the code is that we've set our code up so that if we click on the background of the card itself, anywhere in this white area, that's not going to exit us out of this modal. We either have to click on the background overlay or we have to specifically click on this close button. All right, so here in my modal.jsx file, I have two components. I have a modal wrapper as well as a modal component. Not sure if these are the best names, but that's what I went with. So the modal wrapper component is the one that renders the open modal button. And then when we click on the open modal button, it renders the modal component. Now the modal component is up here and the modal component is the one that contains the semi-transparent background overlay as well as the modal card with the close button. So let's go back to our modal wrapper and notice that the modal component, this is being rendered conditionally. You see, we've set some state using React's useState hook and initialized it to false. And that's why from the outset, we don't see the modal. It's only when we actually click on the open modal button that set is open is called and flips that state to true. And it's important to mention that because this animate presence component from Frame or Motion which is a component that allows us to fire exit animations when the component is removed from the React tree, requires that we conditionally render a direct child, which is what we're doing here. Let's dive into the modal component itself now. So most importantly, the modal component, it contains two divs. We've got this outer wrapping div, and then we have the inner div. The outer wrapping div is for the overlay, and the inner div is for the modal card itself. And what you'll notice is that those two divs, they're both motion divs. And that enables us to use all of Framer Motion's animation-related props like initial, animate, and exit. So initial and animate are used for the enter animation of the component. And the exit prop is used when the component gets removed from the React tree or gets unmounted. And this works because both of these motion divs, these both are contained inside of the component that's getting unmounted and that's a direct child of animate presence. So that means that before this component gets unmounted, the exit animations on these motion divs are going to be allowed to play out first. All right, so let's take a look at exactly what these animations are doing. For that overlay, we're starting with it at an opacity of zero and we're animating up to an opacity of one. So it's a fade in. And then on the card, we're starting that also with an opacity of zero and fading it up to an opacity of one. However, on the card, we're also doing a slight scale up. So we're going from 0.9 to one. And you'll see when I play that again in a second that the transition of the card, that has a little bit of a spring type of animation, which gives it a little bit of a playful bounce. You see, check it out when I click open modal. So it's very subtle, but it's got a little bit of a springy bounce. And these stiffness and damping values, these are used to customize the spring effect. So for example, if we really exaggerate the stiffness, like let's make it 4,000, check out how kind of boingy the spring is now. 
and the damping kind of acts as a, a little bit of a counterbalance to that. So you can adjust these to taste, of course. But let's set that back to something more reasonable, to 400. And then I want to tell you about what I mentioned earlier, the fact that if you click on the white background of the card, the card won't close, only when you specifically click on the close button or on the background overlay. And the key to that is this line on line 15 where we have the on click, which is calling a function that stops the propagation on the click event. You see, if we don't stop the propagation, like let's comment this out. In that case, if we clicked on the background of the card, well now that event, that click event, is going to bubble up to this motion div and it's going to call its on click handler which is in turn going to fire the onClose function, which we're passing into this modal component as a prop. You see, check it out. If I click on the background now, see what just happened there was that the click event on the card bubbled up into this motion div and fired the onClose. So if we don't want that to happen, we put this onClick on the card motion div, and for that click event that was fired, we make sure that it stops propagating up the tree. And why don't we take a look at our CSS settings? So first let's look at the modal wrapper class. And that's been used on this div. And this is using Flexbox to center the button in the middle of the page. And we've got a height of 100 VH or viewport height units to define the height of this modal wrapper. The button styles are pretty simple. We've got the open button with just some padding and we've also got the cursor set to pointer so that when we hover over that indicates this is clickable. The close button class is pretty similar. But probably the most important stuff to look at would be the overlay and the modal card. And those are up here in the modal component. So you remember the overlay is that semi-transparent background. So let's enable that. And we can see that semi-transparency being used here on the background with this RGBA value. Here we're setting it to an alpha of 0.4, which makes it semi-transparent. Again, we're also using some Flexbox settings to center the content here on the page. But most importantly, for this overlay, we're setting it to a position of fixed and an inset of zero. So this inset of zero, this is a shorthand. So instead of doing top right, bottom, and left properties all set to zero, we can just do that in a single setting and set inset to zero. And so that means that this fixed background overlay now is going to occupy the full height and width of the page. And also important is to set a high enough Z index so that this overlay sits on top of the background content. 